right so in the previous episode we have created our student registration form now we will learn on how to access each element in the DOM using some of the most commonly used element selectors okay so let's go on to our main.js then we will try first a single element selector so comment lang natin dito the first one we have is we have the document that get element by id okay so comment lang natin now uh, this one will return or returns an element object represented by its id okay Let's check out our HTML file. Let's try to find some tags with an ID here. Uh, let's try a simple one. I think we'll need to add an ID for this H3. So I'm just going to put here ID equals, let's say, heading. Okay. So in our main.js, we can try to console.log our uh, H3. So you can just type document that get element by ID and then the ID that we specified in our HTML file. So that one is heading, right? Okay, so press control S on your keyboard. Let's show up the console. Now we have our H3 with an ID of heading here. Okay. One minute, we have some problem up. Bootstrap requires jQuery. Oh, I think we forgot to add the jQuery file below. Because jQuery needs, uh, because Bootstrap needs jQuery, so that means we need to add jQuery here. Wala nga jQuery dito. So, punta na lang tayo sa Bootstrap na site. Kunin lang natin yung file na yun. Go to documentation. Then, below here is this one. Copy na lang natin yan. And then, instead, we will just remove this one and replace the one that we copied for the Bootstrap uh, website. So we have the jQuery file, we have the popper.js, and we have the bootstrap.js. That's all we need because bootstrap needs jQuery. Okay, so close lang natin to. Press control S on your keyboard. Now na wala na yung error. Alright, so let's proceed. So what I'm going to do now is I need to change some properties or stylings on this H3 here. So instead of uh, writing each line document that get element by ID, you can assign it a variable. So I'm just going to use the let keyword for now. and going to create a variable called res uh, heading and then you can type uh, document that get element by id and then yung id ng tag mo which is for now we have heading right so that means you are assigning this element to a variable res heading okay so let's try to add some styling to our h3 you can type uh, let's try to change the colors res heading oops equals or dot style dot color I'm just gonna use the normal HTML5 colors here but you can use RGB or you can use the hexadecimal format also so it's up to you I'm just gonna type here uh, let's say green okay so press control s on your keyboard now the h3 here is now green okay let's try to change the background so rest heading that style that background let's say uh what's the best call light gray okay press control s now we have our h3 with a background of light gray here uh straight add some padding kasi medyo nakadikit yung text sa background so let's add some padding the same way press heading that style that padding i will add uh, 10 pixels for padding here okay so press control s on your keyboard now we have our h3 with the padding of dpx here okay so normally ginagawa mo to sa css mo but this is very important if you want to trigger an event and then you will need to change some color you will need to change some background immediately or you will need to hide some element or this h3 you want to hide it you can do that by using this technique okay so for now let's try to hide this one when we click this heading we will hide it so wala pa tayo sa event listeners eventually you will learn it on the next episode but for now we will just use it pakita lang natin kung paano siya i-hide once we click this heading okay so rest heading that 
event listener and then I will add it on click so you just type here click and then a callback function here so you could just type function okay so inside this function you can just type this dot style dot display equals none so that means when the user will click this uh, header we will set it to none it will hide this element okay so you will notice here we have the this keyword this refers to an object that is executing the current block of code so what is the object that is executing in this code we have the rest heading here so rest heading is this one so that means this refers to this element here or to this object here okay so press ctrl s on your keyboard now try to click on the heading now the heading disappears okay so refresh on add in click not and let now it disappears okay so that is very important if you want some functionality like that in the future so you can do that also All right we can also change the text for example if we want to change the text in our heading here we can just type here a rest heading copy okay that inner text oops this one and in the text that you want so let's say instead of student registration form we will change it to student entry form okay so press ctrl s your keyboard now we have here our student entry form text so well, let's try to output this to the console so console.log okay rest heading dot enter text okay so press ctrl s your keyboard now we have a student entry form in the console right here the other options you can also use the uh, text content instead of enter text so rest heading that text content equals uh, let's try to change back again to student information form okay so type here student information form a okay, so press control s on your keyboard now we have student information form here in our heading let's try to output it on console so instead of air text you can just type here the text content okay so press control s now we have here student information form so you can use this or you can use the other option which is the text content right we can also add an html elements to a certain object so for example itong h3 natin lagyan natin siya ng uh, icons so in order to do that you need to insert an element that uh, refers to that icons so you can use font or some icons but for now i'm going to show you how you can use the material icons for your web development okay so i'm just going to maximize this uh, page right now just like that and right here you just type material.io okay and then click on resources this is the one that we need click that one and then the icon font so developer guide para makita nyo kung paano siya gamitin so in order to do that icons or icon fonts for the web ito siya kailangan mo lang i-add ito itong css na to so copy natin yan let's go on to our html file and right below our link from the bootstrap here Let's try to add the material icon theme. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to material icon design. Dito, and then, pili lang tayo ng icons. Let's check for the outline icons. Okay, let's click on here. Maximize lang natin para makita natin masyado. Field. Uh, I think I'm gonna use this one, the account circle. Okay, so click mo lang yan. Ngayon dito, may makikita ka sa left side mo sa pinaka bottom mayroon ditong lumabas na select selected icon and then svg24 so if you want the svg format you can use this but for now i'm gonna use this one the selected icon so expand ko lang siya and then ito yung class na pwede natin gamitin so copy lang natin to ganyan then let's go on to our uh, main.js and then here we can just type rest heading okay that inner html oops inner html equals 
And then yung uh, class na kinapi natin from material uh, website. So, paste mo lang dito. Ito siya. Gawin na natin siyang one line. Ganyan. And then our text here. We will type here student. Oops. Entry form. Okay. So, press control S on your keyboard. Now, we have an icon here of, uh, what is this one? Account circle. So, medyo malit siya. Try nating uh, palagihan. Kasi yung default ng material icon is, I think, 24. So, gawin natin siyang 36. You can change up to, you can change the size up to 48, I think. So, check nyo lang dito sa uh, documentation ng material icon. So, let's try to change the size by uh, styling a little bit of CSS. So, dito, type ka lang style. Okay. Kaya natin siya ng space. Then, yung class na ginamit natin dito is uh, material icons. So, you can just type here that material icons. Okay. Then let's change the font size. So font size. Ito siya. Let's change it to 36 pixels. Okay, so let's try. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we have a 36 px icon here. So medyo de-align yung text natin. Medyo nasa baba siya. In order to fix that, lagyan lang natin ng CSS. Yung heading natin. So instead of that, we will use hash because we assign an ID in there. So heading. Inside here, let's change its display to flex. So if you're familiar with flex box, okay, flex, ganyan. And then I will need to align the text. So in order to do that, you can just type here uh, justify content. Ito siya, gawin natin center. Okay, let's try. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we have a student entry form with an icon on the left here. Okay, so that's how you insert an HTML tag on a certain element. Okay. Let's go back to our main.js. Now, we also have the get elements by class name. Itong get elements by class name, it selects multiple elements and it returns those elements in the forms of an array. Okay? So, hindi siya single selectors, multiple selectors siya. But, pakita ko rin sa inyo na pwede mo rin siyang gamitin to select single elements. Okay? So, check natin yung HTML file natin. Uh, let's add some class to our h3 here. So, class equals... Then, instead of heading, let's try to change it to header. Ganyan. Okay. And dito sa main.js, uh, I think copy na lang natin to. So, copy and then comment. Para at least di lang natin siya mabura. So, paste natin dito. Instead of get element by ID, replace natin siya ng get elements by class name. And instead of heading, put it header. Copy na lang natin to. Then, paste natin dito. Okay, so press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we have an error here of cannot set property color of undefined. So kasi nga yung get elements by class name, it returns an array of items, di ba? So to do that, lagyan mo lang dito ng brackets. Okay, so our heading here is the first item in an array. So that means I will put zero here. Ganyan, press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now nawala na yung error. And at the same time, we have the same result here. Okay, so you can also do that with the get elements by class name. And instead, you will assign an array here. Okay. All right. So let's try to output to the console the elements that we use for get element by class name. So ito siya. Let's try to output its class. Let's see what happened. Class name. Okay. So press Ctrl S. Now you have undefined here. Kasi di mo siya nilagyan ng array. Okay. So in order to fix that, lagyan mo siya ng array dyan. Okay. Press Ctrl S. Now we have a class of header here. So ito siya. Header yung class natin dyan, di ba? That's how you fix it. We will discuss more about get elements by class name later. For now, pinakita lang natin siya na pwede mo siyang gamitin to select single elements. Okay? So, let's move on. What else we have? So, I think, uh, comment na lang natin to. Okay. Okay. Alright, so next one, we have the document that query selector. Okay. Ito siya. So this one, it returns the first element on a document that matches the specific selector. Otherwise, it will return null. Okay. Oops. 
Ano ba yung spelling natin? So, comment lang natin yan. Let's try to have some example. It's console.log or heading. So, console.log. Okay. Then here, you can just type document that query selector. Instead of brackets, let's output our H3 here with an ID of heading. So, once ID siya, gamit ka ng hash sa harap and then type mo yung ID mo. So, heading. Ganyan. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now, we have an H3 here with a class or an ID of heading. Okay? So, for class, copy lang natin. Kung class yung refer mo, instead of hash, palitan mo siya ng dot dito. Okay? Press Ctrl S. So, ganun din. Mayroon tayong H3 dito with a class of heater. What if uh, we will add another class here? We have another H3 here, right? So, I think, whoa, where is that? H3, and then we have an H3 here. Ito siya. So, what if lagyan natin siya ng the same class here? Was header also. Okay? Press Ctrl S. Ang notice nyo dito, ito pa rin yung ni-return niya kasi nga yung uh, query selector, it only returns the first element. So, it doesn't matter na marami kang H3 dyan na the same class, pero ang i-return niya, yung first element lang. Okay? So, don't be confused of that. Comment lang natin to. Now, query selector is much more powerful that you can even get an element within a specific HTML tag. So, for example, if you want to get the element of the student name inside a form, we can get that one using the query selector also. Alright, so in order to do that, it's create a variable here. I'm just going to use the let keyword and the student name equals, type ka lang dito document dot query selector. Okay. And then, check natin dito yung structure ng HTML. Nasa loob siya ng form group na div, di ba? Ito, div, then form group. Itong input na to. Yan. So, dito, type ka lang. Uh, div dot form group. Yun yung class niya. Space. And then, since we get the student name, ito, input siya, di ba? So, type ka lang dito, input. And then, brackets. And then, yung ID niya sa loob. Type mo lang dito, ID equals... So, ano ba yung ID niya doon? Check natin. We have, ito, student name. So, copy mo yan. Paste mo dito. Okay. Now, let's try to console that lag our student name. So, let's check if we can get that input. Ito. Okay. So, press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Right. So, now we have the input here. Okay. So, ito siya. Student name. Ito siya. And you point here. Yan siya, di ba? Now, you can do pretty much anything about this input here by using its variable. So, let's say, lagyan natin siya ng default value. So, student.value equals. So, lagyan natin siya ng, let's say, Pinoy dev. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now, we have a Pinoy dev text here in our name. Let's change its color. So, you can also do that. Student name. Dot style dot color equals let's say uh, let's make it a uh, red okay so press control s on your keyboard now we have a color red of pinoy dev here i mean you can do pretty much anything once you get the uh, elements using the query selector here oh. okay so let's try to console that log the elements that we use in query selector so console that log that log and then document that query selector. And then let's uh, output the uh, H3. Ganyan. Press Ctrl S your keyboard. Now we have our H3 here. So you can also output directly by using the tag. So na notice nyo dito, first element lang yung return niya. Even though may uh, H3 pa tayong isa dito, which is ito. H3 dito, di ba? Pero, kasi nga yung query selector is, uh, it only returns the first element. On the document. So, that's why itong student registration form lang yung nilabas niya. Ito. Okay? You can also assign a nested elements inside the query selector. So, to do that, you can just type your document. That query selector. And yan. And then, let's try to change the color of uh, some of the rows here. Okay? So, tingnan natin yung structure ng table na yan. Ito. Tingnan natin yung structure dito. Nasa sa baba. I think ito siya. So, nasa siya, TR siya, and then nasa TD siya. 
So, pwede mo siyang ilagay dito sa query selector mo. Type ka lang uh, TR, which is the table row. And then, yung data mo, which is the TD. Ganyan. Close mo lang siya sa single quotes. Okay? And then, you can apply some stylings or change anything from here. So, let's say, let's try to change the color. That style, that color equals, let's make it red. Okay? So, press control S on your keyboard. Now, it becomes red here. Only the first row. Okay? Kasi ito, another TD din to eh. Another TD din to. So, ito siya naging red na siya. So, you can also do that. But, if you want to select multiple elements, ito, gusto mong iselect lahat ito, ngayon gagamit tayo ng multiple selectors. So, comment na lang natin to. Let's type here, multiple selectors. Pagin natin sa taas. Multiple selectors. Okay? The first one we have is we have the get elements by class name. So, na-discuss na natin siya sa taas kanina, di ba? But let us expand our learnings for get elements by class name here. So, type lang natin dito document that get elements by class name. Ito siya. Okay. So, comment lang natin dito. I think copy na lang natin yung uh, definition niya sa taas. Get elements by class name. Meron ba tayo dito? I think parang wala siyang uh, definition. So, type na lang natin dito. It returns an element of items and a form of array. Okay. Alright, so let's create one variable here. I'm just going to use the let keyword for now. So, let, let's say res equals document that get elements by class name. And then let's find some class here of, uh, let's check this one. All of our T are here. So, kunin natin yung class na students. So, type mo lang dito, students. Ganyan. Okay. And then let's try to output this one to the console. So, console.log rest here. Okay. So, press control S on your keyboard. Now, we have our TR here with the class of students. So, if you notice, mayroon tayong number 3 dito. That means it returns 3 elements of arrays. 0, 1, and 2. Okay? Ito siya, di ba? 3 siya, di ba? So, expand mo yan. Lahat ng properties dito, pwede mong i-access. So, nandito yung value niya. Ito. ID, yung text, yung gender, etc. And so on. Okay? Right? So, let's try to output the first element here. Ito. So, type lang dito. Console.log res and then yung index niya okay zero so ito try natin to press control s on your keyboard now we only have the first row of student here ito siya ito lang yung ni-return niya okay so nandiyan yung value niya ganyan now we can apply multiple stylings or we can change pretty much anything on this row by just typing here res and then just get the ID or the index that style that color equals. Then let's change it to uh, let's change the color to orange red. Okay, so press control S on your keyboard. Now we have an orange red color on our first row here. Okay, so that's how to use get elements by class name. It selects multiple elements and forms one array. You can pretty much do the same for index one, two, and so on. Okay. But what if we add another class or the same class of students in our HTML file? So, try natin dito. Let's try to add some, I think dito. Let's try to add some student class here. Ganyan. So, the same class, students. Pareho siya dito sa students, diba? So, press control S on your keyboard. Oops. I think, uh, comment lang natin muna to. Para maselect lahat ng... Uh, class na may students. Okay, ganyan. So, press control S on your keyboard. Now, you notice here, nagiging 4 na siya instead of 3. So, dapat 3 lang, di ba? Kasi, ito lang. Pero, kasi nga, gumawa tayo ng bagong div dito, ito, na may class na students. Kinuha niya pa rin. <laughs> Nilagay niya pa rin dito. Tingnan niyo. Yan, nandun siya, di ba? Yung div na ginawa natin students. So, in order to fix that, we can use the query selector to select on a specific tag and then after that, we will use the get elements by class name to get only the class of students in a TR. Okay? So, I think comment na lang muna natin to. And dito sa baba, you can just type let. 
res equals document dot create selector okay and then piliin natin yung check natin dito piliin natin yung content niya which is saan ba nasa t body na tag siya di ba so kunin natin yung t body lagay natin dito t body and then dot get elements by class name kunin natin yung class na ano bang mayroon dito itong tr na to may class na students so lagay mo dito students okay oops lagay na natin sa single quotes ganyan okay, let's output this one to the console so console dot log res Okay, so press control S on your keyboard. Now it becomes 3 here. So ito na lang. Ito na lang yung pinili niya. Ito. Okay, so di na niya pinili yung div tag natin na may class na student sa taas. So that's how you combine query selector and get elements by class name. Okay. Also we have, we also have the get elements by tag name. So comment na lang natin dito. Document that get elements by tag name. Ito siya. So, comment lang natin. So, this one, it returns the HTML collection of a given tag name. Okay? So, try natin dito. Let's do the same thing. Ito, copy na lang natin to. So, document that query selector, that T body. And instead of get element by class name, we will use the get element by tag name. Ito siya. And then yung tag na, uh, kunin natin yung tr na tag, I think. Ah, ito. Kunin natin itong tr na tag inside tbody. So, nandiyan tayo sa tbody. And then, type mo lang dito tr. Okay? So, press control S on your keyboard. Oops, we forgot to console that log. Press. Again, it is a task. Okay, so press control S on your keyboard. Now you have an HTML collection here in the console. So expand mo yan. Nandiyan pa rin yung uh, uh, rows natin. Okay, so that's how you use get elements by tag name. Let's try to output certain elements on the uh, HTML collection. So you can just type console dot log res and then yung index niya. So let's say try to output the index at zero. Press control S on your keyboard. Now you have the first row here. Okay? So that's the index zero in our uh, collection. The first row na to. We can change the stylings. So rest. That style. That color equals. Let's change it to. Let's change orange red. Okay? Press control S on your keyboard. Now, nagiging orange red yung color niya. I mean, you can pretty much do anything in your uh, HTML collection. Itong collections mo na to. Pwede mo siyang i-loop. So, let's try to loop our HTML collection here. So, to loop, you can just type for. Okay. And then, let's create a variable inside. Let i equals 0. i is less than to uh, rest that length. Yung length ng HTML collection natin. And then, i++. plus plus. Okay, inside, you can type here, uh, res, i, that style, that color, equals, then palitan natin siya ng, uh, iba naman, green. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng to, magiging green na yung kulay niya. Press control S, now nagiging green na siya, okay? So, that's how you loop a collection or an HTML collection. You can also convert this uh, HTML collection to an array. So, for example, type natin dito, uh, res equals array dot from, okay, and then yung rest na variable. Okay. So, ngayon, itong rest na to, magiging array na siya kasi ginamitan na natin siya ng array na method dito. Okay. Right, so since res is now an array, you can just loop it by using the res dot for each. Ganyan. And then the callback function inside. Okay. 
I need to slow up. We can try to console that log. I'm just gonna add a callback here. So let's say student. Copy lang natin yan. Then yan yung i-output natin dito sa console. Okay? So press control S on your keyboard. Now, ito na siya. Ito na yung array natin. Ito yung sa task kanina, di ba? Nung 4H to. Now, ito yung na-convert na siya into an array. Ito. Okay? So that's how you convert HTML collection to an array. There are some compatibility issues with some browsers dito by using 4H. So sometimes, if you encounter the problem, ito na yung gamitin mo, yung for loop na lang. Okay? Also, we have, now we also have the query selector all. So, document that query selector all. Ito siya. Okay. So, ito, it returns the node list that match the specific group of selectors. Oops. Okay, so comment lang natin. Try to make some example here. Just gonna use the let keyword for now. I think comment lang natin muna sa taas. Oops. Comment lang natin yan. Okay. So let res equals document that query selector all. Okay. So let's try to get the list of students here. So nandito siya sa loob ng t-body, tiba ito. Itong mga rows na ito, nasa loob siya ng t-body. So, tingnan natin dito sa html natin. Ito siya. Nasa loob siya ng t-body. With an id of students. Or student list. So, to do that, you can just type here uh, t-body. So, since id siya, ilagay mo dito is hash na sign. Or kapag class na siya, in-access mo doon, that yung ilagay mo dito. Since id yung nandun, hash yung gamitin natin dito. So, student list. Ganyan. And then, comma. And then yung row natin. Ito siya. Yung TR natin dito, di ba? So, TR.students. Kasi students yung class niya. So, type ka lang dito. TR.students. Ganyan. So, let's try to output this one. The console. Console.log. Rest. Okay. So, let's see what we got. Press control S on your keyboard. Now, we have four elements here. So, bakit four yung result natin dito? Kasi, once nilagyan mo ng comma dito, it treats this one as separate and also this one as separate. So, once expand mo yan, mayroon kang zero dito as student list. So, ano ba yung student list natin? Itong t-body na to, nilagay niya sa result, sinama niya yan. And then, yung mga t-rs mo. So, yung, ito yung mga t-rs natin, di ba? Yan yung tatlong to. So, in order to fix that, tanggalin mo lang yung comma dyan sa loob. Okay, so comment lang natin, copy lang natin muna, and then paste natin dito. So pag tinanggal mo yung kama sa loob, ang marireturn itong TR ng students na lang. Okay, so press control S your keyboard. Now instead of 4, we only have node list of 3 here. So expand mo yan, wala na yung student list na body mo, itong lahat ng TR na lang. Okay, of course we can also loop the node list. So let's try to use the for loop here, so 4. And then, I'm going to use the let keyword here to declare variable. i equals, oops, 0. i is less than to rest that length. Ganyan. i plus plus. Okay. And dito sa loob, uh, try natin siyang lagyan ng alternate color. So, ito black, ito lagyan natin ng different color. So, to do that, we can use the mod function or the modulus function. So, if. So, sa modulus, you can use the percent sign, di ba? So, i, percent. So, since alternate color yung gusto natin dito, lagay lang natin dito ng 2, di ba? So, we take the remainders of our i, if it is equals to 2 or not. So, that means if it is equals to 0, meaning wala siyang remainder, kulayan natin siya ng black. So, res, i, that style that color equals save block otherwise if one yung result ng modulus natin dito natin lagay sa else okay so lagyan natin ng kulay na red ganyan okay so press control s yung keyboard oops 
Oh, this must be red. Okay, so press Control S on your keyboard. Now we have black here, red, black, and the next row if you have, it will become red. Okay, so that's how you use the for loop for uh, query selector all. We can also loop the node list by using the for each uh, method. So comment lang natin yan. Kasi pag node list may build in a for each method siya. Eh. So rest equals or rest dot for each. Ganyan. And then yung callback function natin dito. Uh, let's add some uh, variable here. Let's say student. And then yung index. Okay. So let's try to change again uh, the colors of each rows. So if copy na lang natin to, I think. To paste natin dito. And then uncomment lang natin. Iusin lang natin yung intention. Instead of i, we can use the index here. So if index, yung modulus niya, if equals to zero, and then instead of rest, so you can just type here students. So students or student, that style at color is black. Otherwise, magiging red siya. Ganyan. So press Control S on your keyboard. Now we have the same result here. Okay? So you can also use that. So I think guys, hanggang dito na lang muna tayo kasi medyo mahaba na yung video natin. So please like and subscribe to our channel para mas marami pa tayong ma-upload mga video tutorials in the future. Okay?